Let's have a look at some examples. What's given to us there is fx is equal to 2 to the power of x. That is an exponential graph. Why? Because the exponent there is what we have x. Normally, a first question what they ask, calculate the intercepts with the axes. Now, knowing that this is an exponential graph, you will know, of course, that the y-axis is your asymptote. What that means is that the exponential graph won't have x values. So the only value that you need to calculate here is what is your y-intercept. And to get your y-intercept, fx is the same meaning as y is equal to 2 to the power x. And remember, getting the y-intercept, all that we have to do, we put x equal to 0. And therefore, anything to the power 0 is equal to, to 1. Absolutely, I think you know exactly what I'm referring to there. Writing down as an of coordinates, we will write it as 0 and 1. So the only possible intercept that you can calculate here is y is equal to 1. Remember, that is a question that I ask you. Why do you think, well, all exponential graph cuts the y-axis at 1? I would please would like you to send me the message or give me the answer. Secondly, number two, write down the equation of the asymptote. Now, by now, that shouldn't be a problem because as I've mentioned some of the characteristics, remember we said y equals to 0 is your asymptote. 1.3, normally the type of question that you really like, they always ask you. Write f to the power minus 1 in the form y equals. Now, remember what is the meaning of this? They ask you to write the inverse of the given graph. Remember, the given graph here is y equals 2 to the power of x. Now, just recall what we said earlier. If we want to get an inverse graph, we swap x and y, and then we write it in standard form. Now, if we have to swap it here, we will write this as x equals 2 to the power of y. Now, learners, if you look at this step very carefully, can you see this refer to the first part that I've explained to you over this? When you have to write from a number into exponential form. So you can see this is the number, that is the exponential form y, that is your base, that is your exponent. Now if you look at this, and if you look at this carefully, you see it's exactly the same. The only thing that's different here is we don't have numbers. But if you can interpret this, we will say x represents your number, 2 is your base, and y is your exponent. So in other words, writing from exponential as the inverse, it means it will be into log form. And therefore, we will write it as the log of the number, remember what is the number? x is equal to the exponent, which is y, and therefore the base is equal to 2. So if you look at that very carefully, then you can see it is in the form y equals. Um, just to undersee where. And the C way, thank you very much. You are giving me the proper answer. I've asked a question. Why do you think will the exponential graph cut the x, the y-axis at 1? And what she says is that if you raise anything to the power of 0, your answer will be always equal to 1. And the C way, thanks a million for that. Learners, I need more input from you as well. Right? Thank you. Back to our question here. So question 1.3 is where they ask you to write it into the inverse graph. 1.4, they ask you to sketch the graph of f and f to the power minus 1 on the same set, same set of axes. That means I need to see two graphs over here. Now learners, I need more answers. I need to tell you me to give me the answers. I have a table here, which is one method that we can use. I'm using the values x is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm looking for the corresponding y values. Remember, how can we get the corresponding y values? Is that we use the equation over there, 
And firstly, if we substitute negative 2 into that equation, we will have y equals 2 to the power of negative 2. And 2 to the power of negative 2 is a negative exponent. It means 1 over 2 squared, and 1 over 2 squared is equal to 1 over 4. Right? If you look at that table, I hope you can send me some answers that I would like to fill it in. I will go slowly, but see if you can assist me or you understand how to complete the table. In other words, if I ask you, if x is equal to minus 1 over there, do you know what the corresponding y value is? The same thing if I ask you, if x is equal to 0, 1, and 2. Yunela, thank you very much. I see Yunela is giving me the exact answer. She says, if x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to a half. Thank you very much to you. Um, Soy and Fondiswa is giving me exactly the same answers. If x is equal to 0 and 1, um, Lungisa is giving me the answers. Thank you, Lungiswa. She says, if x is 0, y is equal to 1. She also says, if x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. And I get the same answer from Lisa and from Roddy. Thank you very much to all of you. Yunela, I'm getting the proper answers. Thank you very much, learners. Uh, it's, it shows me that you do understand. And I need you to give me the answers very quickly so that we can go through more of these sums. Thanks very much to you. Right, and lastly, if x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. Now, what do we need to do from here? We have to plot this. Now, if we have to plot this, these are coordinates or ordered pairs. And doing that means, if x is equal to minus 2, which is x is here, y is equal to a quarter, which gives us the dot over there. If x is minus 1, y is equal to a half. If x is 0, y is equal to 1. If x is 1, y is equal to 2. And if x is 2, y is equal to 4. Now, plotting down all these points, see, if we join them, we will have the perfect exponential graph that we need to draw. Now, as you can see, learners, this is the one important aspect that you need to understand how to sketch it. It's also quite advisable if we can write down these ordered pairs. That's 2 and 4. This is 1 and 2. Remember, this one is 1 over there. The, the first one there is minus 1 and a half. And this one over here is minus 2 and a quarter. Why I ask you to, you know, also do it like this? It will be quite easy if you have to sketch now the inverse graph. Because remember I said in the PowerPoint presentation, it says the inverse graph, one important characteristic is you swap the x and y. So if I have to take this point, for instance, and I have to swap them, I will have the point x equals 4, okay? In this case, x is 2, y is 4. Now then it means if I have to swap it, we will have points we will have to plot. Let's take that one, we will go over there. Are you with me? If you take this point here, minus 1 and a half, if I swap this, x is going to be a half, and y is going to be minus 1. That's going to be the point over there. Okay? For this, if we swap this, x is now a quarter, and y is equal to minus 2. Right? Over here, x is 1, y is, is 2, so if we swap this, x is going to be 2, y is equal to 1, and then lastly we will have x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 2. So you see the understanding where it says swap the x and y and then you can plot that. And if we join those points, we will have our graph, the inverse graph of the function. Right? Remember also here, we can also see in this example, is that over here, if I have that specific line, we will see that y equals to x is the mirror. 
right? And therefore, we can see that the exponential graph is a reflection of the log graph. And it's very important that you need to, to understand that concept. So sketching these two graphs, learners, make sure that you understand the concept about plotting the exponential graph and now to get the inverse of that, you swap the points, plot them, and sketching that gives you a perfect inverse one.